Good morning. Good morning, family. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay, today is May 1st, 2017, and we are starting a video a day in May. So, which means you guys got me every day. Every day, every day, different random times of the day, I'm going to come in, hey guys, what's up, you know, what's going on, just merely catching up, you know, um, and so we're going to see how this works. And eventually, what I'm trying to work towards is more of a consistent uploading, so, and perhaps even going to every day, but I need to work up to that. I need to work up to uh, uh, taping every day. I'm just not used to it. So it's something that I'm building towards, you know, so then therefore we can get regular content. We got regular schedules, programming. We're doing the same shit every week, you know, different things like our Wellness Wednesdays, um, stuff like that, you know, whatever, whatever. You know, I, I have all these things written down. You guys know that I am, I am a writer part-time and I ghost write. And so, um, a lot of times, you just in the background. So, what you do is, you know, on the hush. You know what I'm saying? They pay you for what you do, but it's on the hush. But, and so, I spend a lot of my time in my bed writing. Not just about my ideas and about what's going on in my life, but also for different things that, you know, whether it be it for pay or just, you know, hobby. Um, in college, English was uh, like my minor. That was like my thing. English, oh my God. What we writing, MLA style, what we doing, research papers, what? When it came down to English, English has always been my suit. And I could take it from here to here. I could clean it up and I can take it real low. Um, so that's just the chameleon part of me is the, the range of verbiage. Um, that I tend to use and it trips people out and it's all right with that with me because and therefore I can You know, I'm a chameleon depending on what arena I'm in I'll be able to roll with whatever you know what I mean? So and it works for me, you know, and so um, As I was sitting I was writing and most of the weekend besides tending to uh, my kids schedules um, I tended a lot to me. I tended a lot to me you know, mentally just grounding myself, figuring out what it is that Tina wants to do for Tina now. Um, and what brought this on is the fact that my son, my oldest, he wants to get his own place. He's kind of thinking about, you know what, mom, I'm kind of thinking about what do you think, you know? What do you think if I just, you know, get my own place? And so my daughter's going off to college, and, and then now, and then my baby... You know, but my baby, he still, he ain't but 15, but he ain't got but a couple more years left. He's going to the 11th grade, and uh, and um, he'll be going off to college for sure, and uh, as well. And so, I'm, you know, it's just going to be just me. So, it's like, okay, so now that it's going to just be me, and it's starting to hit me, like, oh, my God, I've been mommy, wife, for most of my life and that's all I really know that is what I know and it has been it has reaped huge rewards for me you know what I mean when I look at the mommy aspect of my life and then when I look at the wife aspect of my life I don't want to get all like you know all soft and shit but you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, you know, going through some things in my mind. I have been all weekend long as I've been conversing with the kids about different things and what is it that they desire and what is it that they want. And, you know, um, when it comes down to, especially with Isaiah, with my baby, Button, third, when it comes down to him, man, me and him was really having some heart-to-heart -heart conversations because... You know, my son is just, you know, I mean, he's just, he's a lot of me. He's a lot of fire. And in my chart, I am I am a, a Leo rising, okay? My ascendant is Leo. So, but I have Virgo in my chart three times. But my moon is, my, uh, my moon is Gemini. And so, uh, and my son is full of scorpion, 
both of my sons are Scorpions. But the relationship between my oldest and the relationship between my youngest, they're, they're equally as strong. But I converse with my oldest differently than I converse with my youngest. And then there's my daughter in the middle that it's a whole different, you know, uh, conversations that we have. <clears throat> and uh, I was talking to my son because this, this weekend he had lifeguard training. He works at the water park. And um, so he had some, life uh, some lifeguard training that he had to do all weekend long. And so the summer is coming up and... Man, they just, you know, they're getting it all revved up and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. You know, the summer's coming and it's just, man, it's just a good time. And uh, so I was talking to him about his job and I was talking to him about responsibilities. And, you know, he was telling me that him and his girlfriend was going through changes. And I was trying to explain to him the relationship that you have with your mom is very, 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 very important as a man, as a young man. Okay. It is very important because, and a lot of times, some men will say, oh, we ain't got nothing to do with the relationship with my mama. A lot of times it does because that is where your nurturing comes from. If you never really got a lot of really nurturing and your mama really didn't hug you in her bosom and, you know, and, and, and rub your head and, you know, and tell you that everything is going to be all right or, or just let you know that you can come to her for any and everything, then a lot of times I think that there's, there's a disconnect um, when it comes down to certain men, not all, um, that, you know, had an absence of that type of nurturing. And so when it comes down to my sons, well, all three of my children. <sighs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I was like, wow, the devil didn't want me to speak on that because as soon as I was getting ready to get started, the shit just went out. Then I put seemingly some new batteries in here and the motherfucker went out again. In like a matter of five seconds. So I'm like, okay, um, something don't want me to speak on this, but I'm going to. I'm really going to hit on it now because apparently this is the direction that I'm supposed to go. And this is my calling on to speak on this today. So let me be crystal clear about the relationship that a mom and a son have on how important it is later on in life. Let me just speak on that for a minute. Because my son now, he's 15 years old. He's already going through little changes with his girlfriend. And, you know, he want to have a little smart mouth with me sometimes. And, you know, he's at that age that, you know, he can go one or the other way. You know what I'm saying? There's different directions he could be pulled at 15 years old. You know, he can be part of the streets, he could be part of the drug thing, he can be part of the gang thing, or he could become a teenage father. There's a whole bunch of different things that he could be pulled at at 15 years old. So right now, and plus my son is a full heterosexual young man. So he's about that life on all kinds, he's about it. He bought that thing, you know? So it's like, okay, so I was having conversations with him this weekend about, you know, getting his mind focused on being responsible, um, being self-sufficient, being a man. You know what I mean? You are a young man and there's certain things that you're supposed to conduct yourself with certain in certain arenas, the way you're supposed to. And I had to let him know because Saturday when I went to go pick him up and they were out there by the pool, I'm sitting in my car and I can hear my son's voice and they over the gate, okay? He up there talking out on how, you know, he this, this, and this, and how cold he is on this, and, you know, I mean, he the loudest one, and I told him as soon as he got to the car, I said, let me tell you something, son, I said, that's all good, because you got a lot of meat in you, whereas, you know, you overt, you know, people gravitate to you, you got this energy about you that, you know, and people are like that, and he is that type of kid. But the thing is, sometimes the loudest motherfuckers in the room is the weakest ones. And I keep telling him, sometimes, especially when you go in some place and you don't even know these motherfuckers, sometimes it's best, you know, you know when to hold them and when to fold them and just kind of watch and gaze. Just kind of watch the atmosphere and feel the energy in the room and feel how everybody else is conducting themselves. If this is a formal affair and everybody on some chill shit, then they don't need motherfucking rerun over here on some old you know what I'm saying? No, we don't need that. We don't need we don't need that in this arena. So in certain in certain um, 
arenas, you have to know when to give and when to pull back and when to give and when to pull back. So me and him was having that conversation over the weekend as well as he was telling me that him and his girlfriend, oh, mom, I'm not with her no more. And I was telling him that, you know what, son, look, check this out. You're going to have to believe other things other than what's in your head. You're going to have to start listening to other voices other than the voices that are running around in your head. Because you can, you can get so caught up with what's in your head, you can't hear nothing else. You can't hear nothing else. You can't see nothing else. You can't focus on nothing else. Because those voices and those visions in your head, they're clouding your space and you can't see nothing else. But you have to allow some of that shit to move out the way because all of that might not be 100 shit. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to digress and decompress a little bit and allow some more shit to come in because everything that's rolling around in your head might not be right. So, as I'm talking to my son and we're talking about different things and I'm just, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm playing different things in my mind, you know, and I'm thinking about different things and I'm thinking about, you know, um, life and, and so many different things. I'm thinking about people. And I'm like, you know what, this is vital that I have this exchange with my son because my son needs to know how valuable it is to have a woman in his life. That is, a, that is very valuable because it's, um, if you guys are on the same accord, it becomes, she becomes an asset to you, not a liability. And not only that, but um, the exchange that a man has with a woman is very, 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 very important. It's very important and it's vital. Anytime you go in against a man and he's so sharp tongued and disrespectful and just so abrasive, that's a problem. That's a problem. You know, and and I really think that it stems to the relationship that a man once shared with his mom. Because if you saw your mom the words you couldn't really trust her or trust her word or you didn't really, she didn't give you that nurturing and safe feeling like, mama got it, don't worry about it, you guys sit here in the room, let me go take care of this. You know, like that, um, like that mother bear that, you know, pulls her cubs to the side and she goes out there and, you know, she tackles whatever and then she comes back to the home and break, make, make sure everything is, you know, on 10 or whatever. Well, this is the conversation that I was having to my son, and I was telling him, I said, son, you know, you have to be able to trust somebody, and the, the beginning of your trust is going to begin with me. I'm not here to harm you, take from you. I'm not here to hurt you or demean you. My point is to grow you up, nurture you, so that therefore when you go out in this world, you are a reflection of the love that I gave you growing up. The love that I know, the, the, the love that I, you know, covered you and engulfed you with is the love that you're going to push out in the world. And that is very, very, very important. So when you meet people, and because first of all, you have to respect where they at. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to learn to accept people where they at. Where you meet them is where they at. And a lot of times, people can only respond to their level of vision. They can only respond to where they at. If they ain't never seen that before, how in the fuck can they be happy about something that they ain't never even seen before? How in the fuck can they really feel comfortable or be given to something that they don't even know? And it's funny because a lot of people, that's, that's just like a lot of people's faith in God. How can I have so much faith in something I can't see? You know, so, you know, a lot of people's faith is really, really challenged these days. And, uh, you know, and I think a lot of it has to do with the nurturing in the beginning in the home. And if you weren't getting that, then therefore, and you're getting out in this world and all you know is hooking and crooking and being mean. And, you know, because there's so many people living in survival mode still. They lived in some survival mode as children. And they're growing up living in survival mode. I'm looking for my next come up. I'm looking for my next motherfucking victim. Anybody that's going to give me what I need, let me see what I can get. I'm out here trying to get it. Well, guess what? When you're out here in this world and you're trying to get it, then there's going to be somebody that's going to get you. Period. Point blank. Dot com. You cannot be out here 
out here trying to get it, trying to get over and get, get, get on people and things and situations because you're going to get God. That's just, it's just as simple. And so, <clears throat> with my son, he is my baby and, and he's so fucking spoiled of the things. I mean, I still wash my son's hair. I still wash my kids' hair. I, I push, put their hair right over the sink and wash them and suds it all up and all. And they dig it. They dig it to this day. Oh, mommy, you gonna wash our hair today? And I'll wash all three of them hair like in one day, like on a Saturday or a Sunday or whatever. Okay, yeah, guys, it's hair washing time. Shit, I ain't got to take them niggas and pulled out all kind of cream and nature shampoo and shit. All kind of oils and shit. Mama, I want mine. I want this on mine today because I like the way that smelled the last time. Mama, do you have any more of that oil that you had last time? Yeah. You know, all that kind of shit. So, uh, you know, I truly believe that there is a strong correlation with that on the relationship. And I was telling my son, I said, you know, right now you're young and you're very impressionable, you know, and a lot of things go about how your friends is rolling and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But you got to be your own motherfucking man. You got to roll your own boat because a lot of times people ain't really trying to be happy for you in this motherfucking life because you have to understand where they at. If they're on trying to get it, then therefore, people that are on trying to get it, they're not really on no respect shit. Because they on some self shit. They're not on trying to, okay, well, what is it that I can do for you? How can I be of service? How can I be good to you? How can I love you? How can I give to you? How can we give to each other? There's an exchange. But, God damn it, if you grew up with, uh, y'all better go out there and see if y'all can go get some money. Y'all go out there and see if y'all can go get this. Y'all go out there and see if y'all friends is having dinner and see if you can go over there and eat with them. Y'all go out there and y'all see if y'all can do this. Girl, you better get you a man that's going to be able to do this right here. Girl, you better, you know what I'm saying, go on down to that welfare office. You pregnant now, you better get at your ass down to that welfare office and go get us some food stamps and some motherfucking wick to make these enchiladas with all that cheese they're going to give us. See, all that kind of shit right there, all of that is out there trying to go get it. You know, now, if you're pushing your kids to go out there and go get it to be self-sufficient and independent, and that's going to bring them a different type of reward. That's going to make them vibrate a little bit higher, and that's going to bring those types of things into their lives. So, the moral of the story and what I'm trying to say and what I'm trying to stress on today is what you give to your children is what they're going to give out into the world. If you're giving them agitation, you're giving them strife, you're giving them hooking and crooking, they seeing you doing the utmost, they seeing you out here, you know, be it mom or dad. See, because men get it fucked up, and they think that, okay, well, shit, I'm their daddy, you know what I'm saying, I'm a man, I can do this. If your son see you dating all these different types of women, and you gravitating to all kind of different types of women, then as a man, your son is going to feel like, well, hell, why do I need just one when there's so many women out here? Shit, my daddy had all kind of women. My daddy had all kinds of girlfriends. There was one girlfriend he, that he brought to the house. Man, she was this, this, and this. My daddy had all kinds and all kinds and all kinds. But when they die, though, who be at the funeral? Oh, that motherfucker still owed me money. That motherfucker wasn't worth a dime. Oh, well, uh, that one right there, it'd be about four or five motherfucking baby mamas or four or five women in there, you know what I'm saying, or nobody at all but the family, his sisters and, and brothers and his goddamn grandmama and them, if she's still living, and aunties and them. them. Them the ones, but the women that he was out here fucking with, because at the end of the day, all that quantity ain't shit when it comes down to quality. You can have four or five, I done said this shit before. Like I was telling my son, you know, you can have four or five different girlfriends, but that four or five different girlfriends is not going to equate to this one right here that loved your ass when your life was low. When you was trying to figure it out and you was trying to, you know, get your scholastics together and trying to get your schooling and all this shit together, this little young lady right now, you don't have anything and she still wants to just be with you. You don't have shit. And she just wants to be with you. Some old puppy love shit. Okay? Now, later on in life, in three or four more years, you're going to be on such and such college campus. You know, looking for NFL, you know what I'm saying, and all this old type of shit. This is, this is where you're going to be at. Then you're going to have different girls that's going to gravitate to you because they're trying to get on. Oh, well, shit, he might be playing for so-and-so. Oh, well, shit, I'm going to fuck with that girl. You ain't never know what he going to. But the thing is, there's also going to be sisters on them campuses that they trying to get their engineering degrees and shit, too. 
They out there trying to handle this, and they get on is to get these scholastics on. You know what I'm saying? You know? But I'm losing my track. <laughs> I'm losing my track because I got so much information that I'm trying to kick out, and plus I'm thinking about my son in the same sense. Um... Assimilation and association works hand in hand, as I keep telling him. You know, if you hanging out with these young ladies that ain't, you know, that they ain't really trying to do nothing but kick it, you know, then they're going to grow up and that's all they want to do is kick it. But you got a little girlfriend that want to study with you, want to do all this and this and this with you, you know what I'm saying, on some growth shit. But you mad because you can't get your way? Because she tell you no on some shit? No, sometimes you needed to hear that motherfucker. No, if she told you no, then it's no. That's it. Respect that. She said no. So whatever you asked her, I don't even want to know. But the young lady said no. But being that she said no, now you ready, you broke it up. And now you ready to go try to find somebody else? Come on, my nigga. That don't, that, come on. Because when you are faced with adversity, a lot of things, a lot of times, the things that make you feel most anxious is the things that you truly need to gravitate to. Because it's there where there's a weakness within you. That you need to conquer whatever fear or whatever that is. That's something that you really need to gravitate to because that's something that you can truly grow from. You can learn from that. Okay? And more than likely, that's the universe saying, you know what, this is really for you. This is a gift that we're giving you, that we're, we're giving you this to nurture and and all this that's not gonna that's not gonna harm you, but to help you grow, and you're gonna learn from this. People don't want that. People want comfort. Oh well, shit! I got this one motherfucking girlfriend right here, man. Shit, we suck, fuck, blow all day long. That's all we on. We we ain't on nothing now. Later on in the night, we out hooking and crooking, trying to get us some more money to suck, fucking all day long. What is that? Where's our goals at? Where are we trying to excel our game at? Where are we trying to boost this shit up to the next motherfucking level? Because we can't do this right here for all our lives. We can't. You know what I'm saying? We can't do this the rest of our lives. Come on. You can't grow in comfort. When shit is just comfortable, you're not going to grow. And anytime something gives you some form of resistance, yes, that's something you might need to look into. It's like, okay, what is that? What is that? How is it made? How does it feel? Hmm. How's that comprised? You know, what is what is that about? You know, you don't look at, oh, well, shit, that's too hard. I can't fuck with that. Oh, hell no. Nah. Let me go back over here to my comfort zone. That's just like how, how I was saying the last week on how, how when people move, they want to move within a seven-mile radius of their spot because, and therefore, they're still in their normal habitat and they're still in comfort, you know, to move 20 miles away. It's like, oh, my God. Oh, shit, I got to get new friends. I, I don't even know. I don't, I don't know nothing about where they... Man, that's too far out the way. That's too far. Well, but that's new possibilities. That's new routes in your journey. That's new paths. That's new growth. You know what I mean? But people don't look at it like that. Because they would much rather prefer to be in comfort. And just like my son. Oh, she told me no, so I won't meet somebody else. No, that don't, no, no, because you're not going to always get yeses. And if you with somebody and that's all they're giving you is yes, 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 you can't, how can you grow or learn anything from that? Ain't nobody supposed to just be giving you yeses all the motherfucking time. Whatever you ask them, yes, 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 yes. I don't expect nobody to give me yeses. On all the time. Because that nigga, that's a burn. I'm, that, it's going to be a burnout. If all you're getting is yeses. If you're with somebody and everything that you ask them is yes. I don't know. I think that would probably work for somebody that want to use somebody. I think that would probably work for somebody that's trying to get over on somebody. But I don't think that that will work with somebody that's trying to be fair. Because I don't want you to tell me yes all the time. I want you to tell me, Tina, no, we're not getting ready to do that. Sit your motherfucking ass down. We ain't going over there. You ain't about to do that. Fuck that. Nah, mama. 
Now, I love you, but that outfit, maybe not. Now, maybe we can do the shirt, but maybe the pants, the camel toe, just a, little, that's just a little bit too much. You know, I mean, come on now. There is either a, a, a give and take and an exchange. Not just no, no. Come on, now you're feeling like this. Now you're like a kid. But, you know, if it's no with some compassion and, and it's some empathy with it, and it's like it's no, but we could do this, this, and this. So it's a no, but it's a redirected no. I much rather prefer a redirected no because and therefore I know that you're not demeaning me as a kid, but you're also giving me an option. Okay, that don't work, but okay, what about this? And that's going to be the same exchange that I'm going to give you. So as I was telling my son, I said, okay, well, it was a no, then therefore that gives you something to work towards. Okay, baby, it's no right now. No problem. Then therefore, let me build up into that yes. Enjoy that space right there. Because in that space, there's growth. It's a no right now. But you're growing into a space where eventually you will reach that yes. So relish in that particular moment and enjoy that time. Because not only that, because to me, I will feel the comfort of this person told me no for a reason. So apparently that's just not what I'm supposed to have right now. That's not what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And especially if I love and trust them, then therefore I have to rest in, in assurance that that no was for my better good. Okay? So, bottom line is, when it comes down to your children and you think for one moment they ain't watching your ass and they're not seeing your exchange with people, they're not seeing... You know, how you navigate through this life and how you do business, you know, and, and how you take care of your bills. How do you take care of your responsibilities? How you treat them? How you treat others? How you treated your mama? You know what I'm saying? They're looking at all that kinds of shit. And if you think for one moment that your kids ain't watching your motherfucking ass, you are terribly motherfucking mistaken.